Have you ever tried to summon the Shadow Man? Cursed streamer, known as XX Gamer Pro XX, had always been a skeptic, boldly debunking myths and urban legends on their popular Roblox livestream. One day, they announced their intention to summon the Shadow Man during their next broadcast, hoping to expose the legend as a hoax and gain more followers in the process. Their fanbase eagerly awaited the event, speculating about what might happen. The night of the livestream arrived, and XX Gamer Pro XX confidently began the ritual. Thousands of viewers watched in anticipation, their excitement palpable in the live chat. As the ritual reached its culmination, the Shadow Man materialized before Skmurprox's in-game character, his terrifying silhouette looming over them. Skmurprox's confident demeanor crumbled in an instant. Their face went pale, and their eyes widened in terror as they stared at the screen. They began to scream, a gut-wrenching sound that sent shivers down the spines of everyone watching. Abruptly, the video feed cut out, leaving only a black screen and the haunting echo of the streamer's screams. The viewers were left in shock, their excitement replaced with a growing sense of dread. Frantic messages flooded the chat, asking if XX Gamer Pro XX was okay. Hours passed with no response, and the viewers' concern escalated. Finally, Skmurprox's family, alarmed by the prolonged silence, broke into their room. They found the streamer huddled on the floor, unresponsive, their eyes rolled back in their head. The only sound they made was a continuous whisper, repeating the name of the Shadow Man like a desperate prayer. XX Gamer Pro XX was admitted to a psychiatric facility, but their condition never improved. They remained trapped in their own mind, endlessly muttering the name of the Shadow Man, a broken shell of their former self. Their live stream was abandoned, a chilling reminder of the horrifying consequences of attempting to defy the legend. The story of the cursed streamer spread like wildfire through the Roblox community, becoming a cautionary tale that reinforced the terror of the Shadow Man. Players learned the hard way that some legends were better left untested, lest they risk succumbing to the same dark fate that had befallen XX Gamer Pro XX. I woke up during surgery, they weren't trying to save me. All right, let's get this started. Incision time, 9.45, a manly voice said loudly, jolting me awake. I felt groggy, and my eyes were kept shut by tape covering my eyelids. I tried to call out for help, but quickly realized I couldn't form any words, nor move a single muscle. Was I paralyzed? Had I been in an accident? My mind was too shattered, unable to recall even the simplest information. Prepare the device, part 108, we don't have much time to get it in place, another voice said. A sharp pain shot through the back of my head, immediately followed by warm liquid trickling down my neck. I wanted so desperately to cry out in pain, but I could do nothing but listen to what happened as something dug deeper into my skull. Apply pressure right there, will you? Don't you see the bleed? The first voice said. It's not working, the second responded after a moment. Fine, then cauterize it, the skin flap is already made. The smell of burned flesh filled the air, making me feel sick. Luckily, I could feel my stomach had already been completely emptied. I knew I hadn't eaten in quite some time. Then it dawned on me. Surgery, I was in surgery. But, I hadn't fallen asleep, and I couldn't move. The surgeon continued to burn my bleeding flesh, and as the pain intensified, I struggled to think back. All I had was a vague memory of a disease, some sort of cancer growing inside my abdomen. If that was the case, what were they doing inside my head? How's he holding up? One of them asked. His BP and heart rate are a bit high, but he's under for sure. Don't worry, another responded. While could hear and feel everything they did, I had no means of communication. Perforator drill. They started the drill up shaking my body as they put it against my skull. The vibrations didn't hurt, but the cracking sound produced as they dug through is one I'll never forget. Shit, did you go too deep? Nah, he's fine. Once the bone was cut through, the pain slowly disappeared. With the brain having no pain receptors itself, I could do nothing but listen to the sickly squishes as they rummaged around inside my head. Is the device charged yet? The surgeon asked. Charged and ready, doctor. I felt a vague sense of pressure as something was pushed deep inside my head. Desperate and terrified, I tried to think about the moments before surgery. 
I'd gone in for a tumor on my pancreas, and while I'm no anatomy genius, that shouldn't be anywhere near my head. Put the electrodes around the device entry, set it to 650 milliamps. A high-pitched tone was produced as they powered up the device, followed by a violent jolt, and then... Darkness. When I finally regained consciousness, I was lying in a hospital bed. A smiling woman stood in front of me. I recognized her as one of the prep nurses, thought I hadn't caught her name yet. Everything went great, Mr. Jones, we got it all, she said, ecstatic. Well, what? I responded. It's all right, the drugs might make you a bit woozy, but you'll be good in another hour or so. A doctor I hadn't seen before entered the room, holding a chart and a syringe containing a crimson, but transparent liquid. Good afternoon, Mr. Jones, my name is Ethan, I'm just here to check up on you and finish the treatment. I peeked down at my abdomen, it stung, and was covered in a large band-aid. Does it hurt? He asked. Why yeah, quite a bit actually. We'll up the dosage of your pain medication in a moment. But first, let me give you the final part of your treatment. Now, this stuff burns a bit, he said, waving around the syringe. But, even with most of the tumor gone, we've still got to kill off the stragglers, don't want them to fester. As he prepared to inject me with the contents of the syringe, my mind started to clear. The memory of my surgery returned with a blast, and I violently retracted in bed, ripping the foreline out with me. You drilled into my head. I shouted. What are you talking about? Ethan said, visibly confused. I woke up during surgery, I heard everything the surgeon said, they put something inside my head. Ethan nodded his head in understanding. Mr. Jones, it's fairly normal to experience vivid dreams while under, some even feel like they're floating around in the room watching the surgery, some just have weird dreams. It's perfectly understandable to mix up fantasy and reality. No, it wasn't a dream, I even felt it, I argued as I reached for the back of my head. There was no wound, hair still intact and no sign of any sutures. As I said, perfectly normal. I calmed down a bit due to his explanation, and let him reset the four and finish the injection. It burned as the liquid entered my veins, searing up my arm and neck. I felt lightheaded. All done! Ethan said, smiling, you should rest now, you'll be here for observation for a few days. You'll be allowed visitors by tomorrow. It had seemed all too real, yet my supposedly incurable cancer had been eradicated, only weeks after categorically being told I would die within six months. Even the setup before surgery had been suspicious. Starting from a nothing more than a phone call from a Mr. Burke, representing a newly founded Artifacts Pharmaceuticals. They were working on a new treatment for terminal cancer patients, he had said. He told me I'd fit the criteria for the treatment, free of charge, seeing as it wasn't FDA approved yet. We set up a quick meet and he explained the procedure, which would combine surgery and their new chemotherapeutic drug. At the time, my choices were either to die slowly and painfully from cancer, or to die quickly on the operating table. Naturally, being in the last stages of life, I took the gamble, and that's how I ended up miraculously cured, against all odds. The next week came and went. I was discharged with a bottle of pain medication to keep me going while I healed. Yet, I just couldn't shake that horrific nightmare from the day of the surgery. Out of curiosity, I looked through the papers I had been given by the company, surprised to find that nowhere in the 50-page long document did they ever mention the name Artifacts Pharmaceuticals, nor the name of any employee. I tried to call the number they'd given me, but it continuously returned a busy signal. Confused, and haunted by the nightmare, I could do nothing but rest, and hope they'd call me back in for a checkup. I needed answers. Time went on, and after a month in recovery, which I spent mostly catching up on my favorite TV shows, I was ready to return to work. First order of business was a meeting with my boss, Daniel Harrison. He had always been good to me, and allowed me all the time off I needed while going through with the treatment. While it wasn't an amazingly well-paid job, I was happy to be there. Benjamin, great to have you back, he basically shouted as I entered the office, embracing me in a rough hug. We then returned to more professional means of greeting each other, and shook hands as went on to talk about my future in the company. I sat myself down in front of the desk, when I started hearing a bizarre sound, feedback like static. 
Though, I couldn't for the life of me figure out its origin. It was just vague, barely audible at first. I tried to ignore it, but Harrison immediately noticed something was off. Are you all right? You look a bit pale, he said. Yeah, I'm fine. Do you hear that? I responded as the sound kept increasing in volume. Hear what? Uh, never mind, my head just hurts a bit, I said, playing off my increasing anxiety. He gave an odd look while pondering what to say next, then he sighed. Look, Benjamin, I know it's not easy to recover from such an ordeal. It's a burden, both mentally and physically. In fact, I once went through a similar situation, many years ago, and it left a scar on my self-esteem, like I wasn't strong enough to survive without help. I'm sorry, I never knew, I said, the sound reaching unbearable levels. That's alright, I never really talk about it, was almost 15 years ago anyway. He paused for a moment, his wide smile turning to a confused look. It was odd though, thinking back. I was supposed to a terminal case, told me I'd be a goner within a year. Then, out of the blue, some guy showed up at my doorstep, proposing a miracle cure. His story hit too close to home for comfort. I can't even remember their name, everything following the surgery feels somewhat vague, distant. What was the company called again? He asked himself. My boss chuckled, heh, it's all gone, I think something beginning with a, hmm art dash something. Artifacts Pharmaceuticals? Yes, that's the one. He yelled, barely audible over the static sound filling my head. How'd you know? That's the same one that fixed me up, they said they were new. That's odd, he simply responded. I excused myself from the office, claiming the headache was worse than I thought, and Harrison said I should take as much time off as needed. No, he ordered me to take time off. No sooner had I left the office, before the sound stopped. I let out a sigh of relief, and hurried back home to once more go over the documents. After a fruitless search, I tried the internet, more phone calls and looked through my email filled with thousands of junk messages. Nothing. If they had truly cured Harrison 15 years in the past, their drug had to be well past the experimental stage, and I demanded answers. The sound breaking my eardrums from within my own head, my awakening during surgery, and the fact that no one I knew had ever heard about Artifacts Pharmaceuticals outside my treatment, it was all too much to handle. I decided that in the morning, I'd return to the hospital and find one of the doctors working on my case, but my head was shattered. I needed to rest. That night, I spent lying awake, unable to find any comfort in the fact that I was cancer-free. Around midnight, my phone rang, one of my old co-workers, whom I hadn't spoken to since my treatment. Benjamin, he said in a somber tone. Alex, I didn't really expect to hear from you, why are you calling this late, is everything alright? It's Harrison, he he's dead. Dead, when, how? Apparently Harrison had suffered a brain hemorrhage from an undiagnosed brain aneurysm, not long after I left the day before. Just like that, he was gone. Morning rolled around, and without a lick of sleep, I headed for the hospital. I asked the receptionist to speak to any representative of Artifacts Pharmaceuticals. She claimed she'd never heard of such a company. When I then asked for one of the doctors, I realized I couldn't exactly remember their full names. So, I asked if anyone in the surgical department was named Ethan. After doing a quick search on the computer, she simply shook her head. Defeated, I left without answers. I continued the fruitless internet search for a couple of weeks, but work quickly occupied most of my time. It was a dreadful place in the wake of Harrison's death. New management took over, and I had to start moving on with life. After half a year, I started to settle down in my life. Free from disease, but with an additional few pounds gained from the recovery. In a futile attempt at combating the weight gain, I returned to the gym, spending most time running aimlessly on the treadmill. I was just reaching my first mile, a huge achievement for someone like myself, when the god-awful feedback sound returned, almost knocking me clear off the treadmill. I glanced to my side, noticing a man in his mid-forties who just started running next to me. Unlike myself, he was in an ungodly well-kept shape, wearing an oversized tank top. It revealed a massive surgical scar on the side of his chest, nicely decorated with a tattoo of a tree, reading Arborvitae, beneath it. He noticed my pained expression and stare. 
You all right, mate? He asked as he walked towards me. The sound intensifying as he got closer, making me clutch my ears in agony. As suddenly as it had begun, the sound just stopped. The man in front of me fell over to the ground, briefly seizing before lying there, lifeless. He'd suffered a brain hemorrhage. At least that was as much information as I could get from the gym staff, but I knew it was more than that. The man had died just like Harrison, that horrific sound preceding his sudden demise. Following the gym event, I visited three separate doctors, begging them to have a look at my head, CT, MRI, whatever they could offer, I'd take it. I even told them about my cancer treatment, but no record of my hospitalization even existed. The first doctor recommended a shrink, the second was clueless, and only the third agreed to give me a scan to check for anything abnormal. Well, Mr. Jones. Luckily we settled for the CT, because the MRI would have torn your brain to shreds. You really should have told me you had some kind of implant. Outside of that, the starburst basically made your skin unreadable. Excuse me? I said, confused, but not entirely surprised that something in there didn't belong. I'm sorry, a starburst is what happens when we put metal in a CT scanner, but that's far better than putting you inside a giant magnet, you dash no, I mean, what implant? I interrupted. The doctor showed me a section of the CT, a large flare-looking artifact covered most of the picture, but in its center was a diamond-shaped metal object. I have to ask, have you had any brain surgery at all? I can't for the life of me figure out what this thing is, but it's clearly not a physiological formation, the doctor said, pointing to the thing inside my head. I don't know. Well, have you been in any accidents, maybe a car crash or other type? Sometimes debris stuck inside you can travel through your blood vessels, regardless of where the original injury was. I had pancreatic cancer, stage 3, they did surgery and gave some experimental treatment, but... What exactly did they give you? He asked, sounding more curious than concerned. It was just an injection, I think, and it was only once following the surgery. Look, Mr. Jones, I'm not an oncologist, but as far as I know, there aren't any single injections on the market that can cure cancer. What you'd need would be months of chemo spanning over several sessions. Whatever they gave you, it wasn't for the cancer. He looked over my head, and to my surprise, he actually found a scar that I myself hadn't noticed, though only a minuscule one. Well, you have a scar for sure, but it's amazingly well hidden, never seen anything so small from brain surgery. I tried to explain my experience during the surgery to the best of my limited memory, but he couldn't help. He told me he'd look into some different pharmacological trials to see if anything fit my explanation, but he didn't seem very hopeful. He couldn't even remove the damn thing, claiming it sat too close to my brainstem, or something. So, here I am, living life as good as I can, still waiting for answers. Every now and then the sound will return, and when it does I just stop dead in my steps, and run the other way. I can't let anyone else die simply by getting to close. Whatever they did to me, I'm not alone, there are others out there with the same implants, and I fear we'll just have to wait to see what their purpose are. If anyone ever gets contacted by Artifex Pharmaceuticals, don't agree to any of their miracle cures. The Broken Gamer, a once-dedicated Roblox player known as Lost Wanderer 87 was always eager to explore the farthest reaches of the game's virtual world. One fateful evening, they ventured into an abandoned building rumored to be haunted by the Shadow Man, disregarding the chilling tales that swirled around the ominous figure. As Lost Wanderer 87 moved deeper into the decaying structure, they felt the temperature around them drop, and an eerie silence enveloped the building. Unbeknownst to them, the Shadow Man had sensed their presence, drawn to their curiosity and disregard for the warnings. As they turned a corner, Lost Wanderer 87 came face to face with the Shadow Man, his dark form filling their screen. Fear coursed through their veins, and they desperately attempted to log out, their hands shaking uncontrollably. The game, however, refused to respond, crashing and leaving them trapped in the room with the sinister figure. The Shadow Man's haunting gaze bore into Lost Wanderer 87's soul, filling their mind with nightmarish images and whispers of doom. Paralyzed with terror, they could only stare at the screen as the Shadow Man's presence seeped into their very being. When their parents eventually discovered Lost Wanderer 87, they were a shell of their former self, huddled in a corner, rocking back and forth, and mumbling incoherently about the Shadow Man. 
Concerned, they took their child to see a therapist, but no treatment could free them from the dark grasp of the Shadow Man. They never touched a computer again, fearing that he would return to finish what he started. The tale of the broken gamer spread rapidly through the Roblox community, a chilling reminder of the dangers lurking in the shadows. Many players swore to avoid the abandoned building and to heed the warnings surrounding the Shadow Man, lest they become his next victim. The Cursed Avatar I stumbled upon the story while browsing the dark corners of the internet, and I couldn't help but share it with the world. This is the story of a girl named Sarah and her terrifying experience in the virtual world of Roblox. Sarah was a huge fan of Roblox and spent hours upon hours creating new avatars in the virtual world. One day, she decided to create her dream avatar, a beautiful princess with flowing hair and a sparkling gown. But as soon as she logged into the virtual world, something went terribly wrong. Sarah was horrified as she gazed at her avatar. The once beautiful princess was now a twisted, demonic creature with sharp claws and glowing eyes. Its skin was a sickly shade of green, and its hair had turned into writhing tentacles. What happened to my avatar? Sarah cried out in despair. Why did it change? She tried to touch its face, but as soon as her virtual hand made contact, the avatar let out a blood-curdling scream. Sarah stumbled back in fear. I have to get out of here, she whispered to herself. I can't stay trapped in this nightmare forever. But no matter what she did, she couldn't log out of Roblox. The game had become a living nightmare, and she was trapped in the virtual world with her cursed avatar. As she tried to find a way out, she was pursued by a horde of demonic creatures who seemed to be after her. Every time she thought she had found a way out, she was pulled back into the virtual world. Please let me out of here, Sarah begged. I don't want to be trapped in this virtual world forever. She had never felt so scared in her life. The virtual world had become a living nightmare, and she was trapped in it with her cursed avatar. She had to find a way out before it was too late. Unfortunately, the fate of Sarah after she was trapped in the virtual world is unknown. The last recorded message from her was her desperate plea to escape the virtual world. Some say that she was consumed by the demonic creatures that pursued her and became one of them. Others believe that she managed to escape the virtual world and return to the real world, but was forever haunted by the experience. There are even rumors of players logging into Roblox and encountering a ghostly figure that resembles Sarah's cursed avatar. Some claim that they've heard her voice, begging for help and warning others to stay away from the virtual world. The Red Dress Girl, a haunting Roblox legend. The Red Dress Girl is one of the most famous and terrifying legends within the Roblox community. The story centers around a young girl wearing a red dress, who is said to haunt various Roblox games, seeking revenge on those who have wronged her. The origin of this vengeful spirit varies with each retelling, but one common thread is that she was a normal Roblox player who suffered a terrible fate, leading her to become the restless ghost she is now. Players have reported encountering the Red Dress Girl in different games, often during nighttime or in dark, secluded areas. She appears as a pale, ghostly figure with long hair, wearing her signature red dress. Her eyes are said to glow with an eerie, otherworldly light, and she seems to have the ability to appear and disappear at will. Those who claim to have witnessed her presence report feeling a sudden chill in the air and an overwhelming sense of dread. The Red Dress Girl is said to be on a quest for vengeance, targeting those who have caused harm to others in the Roblox community. It is believed that she possesses supernatural powers, allowing her to manipulate the game's environment and punish those she deems guilty. Those unfortunate enough to cross paths with her are said to experience a series of misfortunes, ranging from sudden glitches and lost progress to being haunted by her presence even outside the game. Some versions of the legend suggest that there may be a way to appease the Red Dress Girl and avoid her wrath. Players who show remorse for their actions and seek to make amends by helping others within the Roblox community may find themselves spared from her vengeance. This has led some to see her not just as a vengeful spirit, but also as a guardian of sorts, protecting the innocent and punishing the guilty. While many dismiss the Red Dress Girl as nothing more than an urban legend, the chilling stories of her haunting presence continue to circulate within the Roblox community.